Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. In news from the occupied Palestinian territories, Israeli negotiators are now demanding that Palestinians concede their future state border at the separation wall along the West Bank. Palestinians say this amounts to an illegal land grab as the separation wall crosses the internationally recognized 1967 Green Line. Almost 10% of the West Bank will remain on the west side of the barrier in Israel when construction of the wall is completed, according to the Israeli human rights group Betselem. Now joining us to discuss this is Shir Hever. He's an economic researcher at the Alternative Information Center, a Palestinian-Israeli organization active in Jerusalem and Beit Sahur. He's also the author of The Political Economy of Israel's Occupation, Repression Beyond Exploitation. Thank you so much for joining us, Shir. Thank you, Jessel, for having me. So, Shir, we wanted to get your response to this news. Um, you know, it's long been suspected um, that Israel, you know, wants to annex most of the West Bank. Um, but now they're saying they're going to take everything west of the barrier wall. So we want to get your response and also what's going to happen to the massive amounts of settlements that are on the other side of the barrier wall. I think we should uh, separate between reality and fiction. Uh, and uh, w the, the separation wall uh, is, is reality, is something that uh, has been uh, built by Israel over the past uh, 13 years. And I'm saying this uh, not because they, it, they take a very long time to build the wall, but because they constantly move the wall. The wall is uh, part of a policy used by Israel uh, in order to uh, confiscate Palestinian land, in order to separate between, pop between populations. And uh, this is a, a reality which uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have to deal with every day uh, when, when the wall prevents them from reaching their schools, reaching hospitals, reaching the workplaces or their lands. Uh, and in fact, uh, the wall, even though Israel calls it the security barrier officially, uh, in a meeting in which uh, I was present, uh, the Brigadier General Yair Golan, the former commander of the Israeli forces in the West Bank, told uh, the, the people present that, in fact, uh, the wall was not built in order to provide security. It was uh, his orders that he received from the Israeli government were that the wall's first purpose is to separate between people, uh, uh, meaning that uh, the, the wall's uh, true true uh, intention is to prevent Israelis and Palestinians from meeting each other, becoming friends, getting married, uh, and, uh, and its secondary purpose is to provide security. Uh, and that's one of the reasons also why the wall is uh, moving all the time, because they're trying to incorporate as many Jews as they can uh, on the Israeli side of the wall, but at the same time trying to exclude as many Palestinians as they can on the other side, on the east side of the wall. This is the reality. But when we talk about negotiations, we talk about the, the uh, demand by the Israeli negotiating team in the current uh, talks with Palestinians, we go into the realm of fiction because these negotiations are not uh, really negotiations. There are no two sides here who are able to negotiate give and take. Uh, there is one power, uh, which is Israel, which is the occupying power, the sovereign uh, power in the region, uh, and they have control on both sides of what's happening currently uh, uh, around the, the wall of separation. They continue to collect taxes on both sides of the wall. Uh, so what the, the, per, the, the, the only reason why the Israeli negotiating team is making this uh, kind of uh, demand is in order to perpetuate the illusion that this, these are negotiations between two sides. And the way that Israeli government is trying to sell the negotiations, both to the Israeli public and to the rest of the world, is as if it is some kind of haggling. So they start with, what the Palestinians have already said, there's the international recognized border of 1967, which is um, the border uh, that was uh, established after the and this should be the international border uh, and the Palestinian state should be created on the other side. Um, and this is, uh, uh, so, so Israel said, okay, this is your demand, we'll make a counter demand, we will say the, the wall of separation should be the border, meaning that we're going to annex uh, uh, amounts of areas and in fact turn the Palestinian territory into small enclaves. But the reason I'm calling this fiction is everybody knows that this is not actually going to happen. Everybody knows also that the Palestinian leadership will never accept this. And even that the Israeli government is not really going to follow through and make it as, as a real offer. They're not going to allow a, a Palestinian state, a sovereign Palestinian state, even in those tiny enclave, uh, enclaves that will remain uh, after um, the, the wall will be considered a border. 
So the reason that they're making this offer is to create a, the illusion that they're haggling. Um, but uh, um, I think I think uh, it's very clear that the negotiations will eventually uh, end in, in failure. I think uh, everybody knows this now. But uh, still, the Israeli government is trying to to win some time uh, to keep the negotiations in a little bit so that they can say they're in the middle of the peace process. They're trying their best, and this helps them uh, to stave off some international criticism. And in 2004, the International Court of Justice found this wall. Uh, violated international law. Um, how exactly is Israel able to demand this as, or call for this to be their border, as you say, only as a posture, but talk about why this is even possible. Yeah, uh, we should uh, understand that Israel doesn't recognize uh, the validity of international law um, in practice. Officially, it does. In fact, right after Israel occupied the Palestinian territory in 67, they acknowledged that the Fourth Geneva Convention applies to the occupied territory, but they later changed their mind and they decided not to abide by international law anymore, um, when it, especially when it's not convenient for them. The wall, um, they say, is built not... Uh, it, 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 Originally, the wall was was designed. They said this has nothing to do with future borders. It has nothing to do with uh, which area is occupied and which isn't. It's just about security. But somehow it happened that uh, the wall's route uh, goes in such a way that uh, it doesn't go into Israeli territory for one centimeter. All of the wall's route is deep inside Palestinian land. Uh, so security considerations are only taken into account when it's uh, at the expense of Palestinians, never when it's at the expense of Israel. Um, but but now this uh, idea that the wall can be considered an international border is a preposterous idea. But uh, why, how can Israel make this claim? They can make it, this claim as long as uh, the uh, United States is willing to continue the charade and to tell uh, the world that there are negotiations that the United States is mediating between two sides as if there are indeed two sides. And as long as this charade continues, Israel can say whatever they want. They can make these uh, offers. They know they, the offers will not be accepted. Um, but uh, if Palestine, the Palestinian leadership uh, of the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah is going to fall into this trap and make a counter offer and say, well, no, we're not going, we, we don't accept uh, the wall of separation as the border. We want to insist on the 67 borders. Then uh, it only prolongs the negotiations. This is what Israel is really after, prolonging them. Shir Hever, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Joseph, for having me. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. And you can tweet me questions, comments, or story ideas at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us.